Hi guys, it's uh, Dr. Eeks here from bloomingwellness.com and I'm gonna make a case for you guys not to use the term anti-vaxxers. Um, so bear with me here. Um, first of all, let's just talk about people who are against vaccines, right? Like that's been around since the beginning of time. If we go way back in history, there was always people who were concerned or against them. Um, I can think of the smallpox outbreak in Boston in 1721, and that was before vaccinations, but people were um, inoc using inoculation, which is sort of like the precursor in Europe, and there was a Reverend, Reverend Mather and one doctor, Dr. Uh, Boylston, and they started to inoculate people in Boston, and, and the majority of the medical community was like, what are you doing? This is not going to work. You're not going to save lives. You're going to kill people. Um, they were very against it. And uh, in fact, at one point, the reverend had a bomb thrown in his house. Um, so yeah, we can go way back, but let's let's focus on the, the current vaccine and, and use that as um, context for the anti-vaccine movement. Um, so first of all, like this, this vaccine is a little different than other vaccines because it's new, it came out fast, new technology. Um, so the demographics of people who are hesitant is a little different. Um, some people are hesitant that you wouldn't expect them to be. <clears throat> In general, there's about 40% of the population that is hesitant. And, you know, they, people have concerns, which, which makes sense. We should normalize that. We should say, hey, yeah, it's okay to have concerns and ask questions and um, hopefully get answers. Um, In this case, in particular, uh, more there's a higher percentage of minority groups that are hesitant or against, um, more, much more than white people. Um, and uh, also, there's also people, you know, who are concerned about liberty. Um, there's, there's that group. Um, but let's talk about, let's go back to this high percentage of minority groups. And this, again, goes back to... Um, my philosophy of how we talk about health topics, which is empathic communication, always leading with empathy and understanding somebody else's story, like their, their perspectives, where do they come from? So, I mean, public health has a dark history when it comes to um, running unethical and racist experiments. Uh, on minority groups, obviously, you know, the most famous one is Tuskegee, where um, black men had uh, syphilis and they weren't treated with penicillin and they just sort of let it go to see the effects, which was horrible. Um, there was forced sterilization of minority women. Uh, Guatemala, like federally funded researchers went down to Guatemala and um, gave people STDs to study them. Um, so th there's a lot of reasons for um, minority groups to be hesitant. There is a history there, and we should acknowledge that. We certainly shouldn't call them all anti-vaxxers. Um, I mean, even let's let's look globally. Let's let's go to Pakistan for a minute. I posted this as a medical trivia fact the other day, but uh, our own CIA ran fake vaccination campaigns to gain intel on people. They did it with uh, Osama bin Laden, and in fact. Afterwards, um, while we killed Osama bin Laden, uh, the people in Pakistan were very distrustful of vaccines, and subsequently there was a polio outbreak um, in Pakistan. Well, Pakistan still is trying to get polio under control, and that is on us. Um, I talked about the Liberty Group. I'd say if you look at the demogra demographics, uh, there's more... the you know, white women who are Republican, maybe they fall more into that category. Um, then there's this other group, uh, parents, parents of children, and, and they believe that their child was injured by a vaccine. I don't know if you've ever talked to these parents, but I have, and um, I spent quite some time. And let me just say this, their stories are heartbreaking. Um, they're tough to hear, they're similar. They all talk about, you know, a light going out. My child received a vaccine and then a couple days later they went downhill and then they're never the same. They have neurological damage, not the same 
don't make eye contact, don't smile. So um, now, who am I to tell that parent that you're wrong? Shut up, don't share your story, you know, you're an anti-vaxxer. And a lot of these parents are very active um, in, you know, raising awareness. Some of them are very, you know, they're against vaccines. Um, but again, as a communicator, as, as someone who's trying to communicate science, I have to be empathic and, and say, well, this is their story. This is their lived experience. And who am I to tell them that they're wrong or that their experience is wrong? I'm not. Um, but it's my job to figure out how to communicate with them effectively rather than labeling them, telling them to shut up, telling them that they're wrong, because that helps no one. Um, finally, let's just get into the research here. Uh, the Labeling someone, calling someone an anti-vaxxer doesn't work. It doesn't help your cause. You can call five people anti-vaxxers. You can call a thousand people anti-vaxxers, try to push them out of society. Doesn't help your cause at all. Doesn't do anything. Um, uh, so, in fact, um, talking down to people actually hurts your cause. Um, uh, you know, this I, what I call othering, it actually hurts your cause. It, it, it's not going to get people to trust you. It's not going to get people to um, say, okay, I'll get vaccinated now. Um, so it doesn't work. So it's kind of like, you know, when people like fat shame and then you look at the data and you're like, yeah, fat shaming doesn't make people lose weight. Calling someone an anti-vaxxer doesn't turn them into, you know, a pro-vaxxer. So these are things to remember. Um, empathic communication. Uh, I discourage the use of anti-vaxxer on my social media pages. Um, it's othering, it's reductive, uh, and all it does is just further the divide and fuel the fire, so to speak. So um, it's not a good approach. That's my uh, two cents for the day, guys. Thanks.